you are welcome to today's session of uh, the Pramivara master class as well as the MS project. Uh, today we are going to look at a very critical aspect of the project management cycle which is scheduling. So we are going to basically digest uh, how to schedule projects. We are going to look at some of the the technical terms or the things, the, the most important things that are involved in project uh, scheduling. So you're welcome and stay tuned, keep on learning and uh, you subscribe to the channel and you share to your friends so that we can all learn together. So let's move on. How do we define a project schedule? When we talk of a project shadow in project management, a shadow is basically the time period required to complete a project. So, uh, if you are on a project, if you are on a project, the period of time that you are going to use as the team to complete that project is the project shadow or the shadow for the project. So before a contractor will build or before a contractor will be awarded uh, to a particular contract, uh, the contractor, the team, they are responsible, especially the project team are responsible to provide a shadow I mean, a shadow, the, the duration at which they are, they are going to complete the project. The project or the shadow will be a guide for them to know the actual time that they are going to start the project and then the actual time that they are going to finish the project. So when there is a delay, uh, basically they are going to or they will be able to deduce all the delays from the project shadow. So without the shadow, the, the project team might not be able to, to, I mean, they might not be able to determine the critical activities or activities that they are to start or um, some activities that they are to delay for a while before they can start. So uh, basically the shadow is an important component in every project because it serves as a guide to the project team. So today we are going to look at uh, more, I want to talk more about the project shadow. So as I defined earlier on, a shadow is a period of uh, time required to complete the project. So now, basically, the project shadow gives a detailed plan. It gives us, it gives us a detailed plan. Take note of this word. Take it very serious. It gives us a detailed plan on how and when Look at it on how and when the project will be delivered to the client. When I talk of the client, uh, if contractor has been awarded contract to build a university hall, basically this university hall will be awarded by either the government or an organization. That organization or the government is the client of that particular project. So, the shadow gives a duty plan on how and when the project will be delivered to the client. So, the shadow is going to tell us how are you going to start or how are you going to follow, uh, how are you going to divide or how are you going to uh, start the individual activities when uh, 
like the, the various time line on the individual activities and when they will be delivered to the to the client so a shadow in the project is a very key component that the project team are very serious about it now we are going to look at two main basic types of shadow now we have forward scheduling forward scheduling and backward scheduling when you talk of forward scheduling the forward scheduling has some element of the start date the early start date and early finish date as we progress further I'm going to take them one after the other to digest them so that learners will be able to understand the meaning of early start, early finish, and the, the starting date. Now, mathematically, mathematically, we can express the early, the early finish date, the early finish date as early start plus the duration minus one. Early finish is equal to early start plus the duration minus one. Just take note of it. As we move on or as we progress further, you will be able to understand the, the basic formula. Or I mean, we are going to, I'm going to teach you the, 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 the meaning of this particular formula. So take note of that. Now let's come to the backward scheduling. The backward scheduling has these features. You have the finish, the late finish, uh, start, sorry, the late start and then the late finish. When you take the late finish also, the late finish has this basic mathematical expression. So the late finish, the late finish is equal to the late start minus the duration plus one. So when you compare these two, you can see that the operation signs, the operation signs are interchanging here. Here you can see that it is an addition. And at this point, for the early finish, you can see that it is a negative sign here. When you come to the the the, back, the, the inner bracket to we have here as, a, as an addition sign and this side as uh, a subtraction sign. So as we move further, we are going to look at the meaning of all these formula. Let's progress. We call something the PDM model. When we talk of the PDM model, the full meaning of the PDM is the precedence diagramming method. The precedence diagramming method. What is it? When you talk of the PDM model, it's a model technique in which activities are graphically linked by one or more logical relationship to show the sequential order in which they will be delivered within the project time frame. So let's take this for 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 for, an, for example, assuming we are uh, we are building, or maybe let's let's look at uh, a typical example like if we are casting a concrete. Now, before we cast our concrete, there should be a premise design, a premise design to check the strength of the concrete. Now, this strength of the concrete would help us to give or to make an exact quantity of sand, cement, and then the aggregate that we are going to use to, to cast our final concrete. But then, 
this concrete comes in a sequential order. Uh, maybe first of all, we start with the mold. From the mold of the concrete, we go to the mixing ratios and all that. So you can see that it is a sequential order. We start from one activity, we finish with it, then move to the next activity in that order. So we come to the project time or the delivery time. So the activities are in order. But then we don't just take all the activities as, as one. We tackle each activity per the shadow. We tackle each activity per the shadow. So the, the process or um, the model technique that uh, is being graphically represented, which links all these activities to show the order in which these activities will be delivered is what you call the precedence diagramming method or the PDM. Now let's take some typical example here so that learners will be able to understand the meaning of the PDM. In an emergency pen stock erection, an activity form works A must be completed before the casting of concrete B using finish to start relationship. Now, with the finish to start relationship, in our next slide, we are going to, I'm going to teach you the meaning of finish to start relationship, but we are going to use this as an example. Now, let's read the question again and analyze it. The question is saying that in an emergency penstock erection, penstock, an emergency penstock is 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 related to uh, uh, tailings dam project. Basically, we, we we build this emergency penstock. Uh, it has a purpose with, with regards to tailings. If you are building a tailings dam, the emergency penstock. Uh, that's a purpose to serve there. Now, in order to build this thing, it tells uh, emergency pen stock. Before we can cast our concrete, there should be the formwork. When I talk of the formwork, I mean the framework, the wooden structure that is going to take the shape of the emergency stock uh, pen stock should be erected first, and that is our activity A. So the formwork, without the formwork, we can't cast the concrete. So in this case, we need to finish our formwork A before we cast our concrete B using the relationship, the relationship finish to start. The meaning of the finish to start is that we are to finish the first activity which is the form work before we can start the second activity which is casting of the concrete so the relationship that we are going to use to link these two activity is finish to start so finish the first activity before you start the second one now let's come to the diagram when you look at this side you see that the formwork is taking place first. The moment we are done with the formwork, our next activity is the concrete cast. Because the question is telling us that before we can cast our concrete, we must finish our formwork, which is the first activity. Now, look at the arrow here. Now, when you take this rectangle as a whole, now let's come to the end point of the rectangle. The end point of this rectangle is assumed to be the starting point of the rectangle. And then to the, the, the right side, the, the end point here 
is also assumed to be the finishing point of the rectangle, the finishing point of the rectangle. It means that we start from this side and we progress in this direction till we finish here. We start here and then you finish it here. So if we are using finish to start relationship, it means that we are going to start here and finish the activity A at this point. The moment we finish here, now let's let's look at the concrete cast. The concrete cast two has two, the rectangle for the concrete cast two has two points. One is at this point, and then the other one is at this point. Now to our left hand side here is our finish, and to our right hand side here is our start. So we are finishing here, and then look at the direction of the arrow. The arrow is pointing at the starting point of the activity B. So uh, the formwork is ending here, which is the finish point. Right after the formwork, right after the formwork, we are going to start our concrete because the arrow is pointing at the at the starting point of the second activity which is the concrete cast so that is the meaning of the relationship let's move on as you progress you'll be able to understand the relationship very well okay Let's look at this relationship. Okay, now let's take activity A and B. As we said earlier on, we know that when we take the, the whole activity of A, it has gotten two points. The starting point and then the finishing point. When we come to B, B has a starting point and then a finishing point. Now let's look at the, the direction of the arrow. The arrow is starting at where? At the finishing point of the activity A. And then it is touching the hot, the starting point of activity B. So when you see a relationship linking like this type, it means that uh, the activity or the, the shadow is telling you that before we can start the activity B, we must finish the activity A. I'm taking it again. Before we can start the activity B, we must finish our activity A. So in this case, our relationship becomes finish to start relationship. That, that is finish activity A before we start activity b finish the whole of this activity before we come to the activity b because when you look at the arrow the arrow is touching or it is starting from the finishing point of the activity a and it enters it enters into the the starting point of the activity b so that becomes a finish to start relationship now let's come to the second diagram let's look, let's look at the direction of the arrow now we can see that our red line our red line starts here it comes from it comes here down and it moves straight to the the point here now let's look at it very well you can see that on the activity C, on the whole of activity C, our link, our relationship link starts from the finishing point of the activity C and it enters, it enters the hot, the finishing point of activity D. I'm taking it again. The relationship start from the the finishing point of activity C and it 
it ends at the finishing point of activity D. What this means is that before we can start the activity D, we must finish our activity C. Before we can finish our sorry, before we can finish our activity D, we must finish the activity C before we can finish the activity D. So in this case, the relationship become finish to finish. That is finish activity C before you finish activity D. Finish activity C. Finish activity C before you finish activity D. Now let's come to the next relationship E, activity E and F. Let's look at where the the linking uh, the linking activity or relationship, sorry, the linking relationship is starting from. At this point, let's look at the edge of the activity E is the starting end. Is the starting end. So it starts from here, comes down, and then it also enters at the hot, at the hot, at the starting point of the activity F. So that is starts from here, and then it enters here. So this side becomes the start of activity E to the start of activity F. So this relationship becomes start to start relationship. It means that as we start activity activity E, then we can also start activity F. As we start activity E, then we also start activity F. Now let's come to our final relationship. The relationship link starts from the it starts from where this point it comes here and then it look at where it ends that is the finishing point so what this means is that the relationship it's now or it's it also a start a start to what to finish relationship it is a start to finish relationship what this means is that before we can before we can finish activity H, we must start the activity G. Before we can finish activity H, we must start activity G. So that becomes start to finish relationship. So I think uh, we you have been able to understand the concept of activity relationship so when i talk of use the start to start relationship you know what i mean when i talk of use the finish to start relationship you may be able to, you may be able to understand the finish to start relationship uh, then down to the start to finish relationship now we are going to look at two main basic technical terms that are related to the the um, that are related to uh, the scheduling. Two main basic terms that are related to the scheduling. We have the term lead and lags. Lead and lags. So we are taking lead for first. Or we are looking at lead as we're going to explain the lead first. When you talk of a lead, a lead is when a successor activity is advanced with regards to a predecessor activity in time period. Let me go back and then I want to show you something here. Now look at these two activities. The first activity is called a predecessor activity. So always our first activity, our first activity 
is what we call the predecessor activity. And our second activity, activity becomes the successor. Our second activity becomes our successor. It means that after finishing the predecessor activity, our activity will be succeeded by the next activity, which is this activity. So this is our predecessor and our successor. So when you look at this one, the C is the predecessor activity and the D is the successor activity. So let's come back. So a lead is when a successor, so now when I talk of a successor activity, you now understand the meaning of a successor activity. So a lead is when a successor activity is advanced with regards to a predecessor activity in time period. We are going to look at the meaning of the lead. So pay attention. Let's take this example. In a project to build a complex university hall, for students, the soil sampling can be scheduled to start one week prior to the shadow foundation excavation. In a project to build a complex university hall for students, the soil sampling can be scheduled to start one week prior to the scheduled foundation excavation. Now, with the definition of the lead, which is when a successor activity is advanced with regards to the predecessor activity, the meaning of this is that we are going to start two main activities. One is to excavate our foundation. And two, we are going to do soil sampling. We are going to do soil sampling. Now, what this lead means is that our predecessor activity, our predecessor activity, which is the foundation excavation, our predecessor activity, which is the foundation excavation is causing us to start our successor activity which is in advance let me take it in that way our successor activity in advance one week time before we start our foundation excavation probably there might be some challenges with regards to the foundation excavation because of that, we started sampling, our soil sampling, one week prior to the foundation excavation or prior to the scheduled date for the foundation excavation. It means that now the foundation excavation should have started first, but because of maybe one or two things we are starting we are starting our soil sampling one week in advance one week in advance before we start our foundation excavation so this project or in this act in this scheduling the soil sampling is leading the foundation excavation one week it's leading the foundation one week because we started the soil sampling one week prior to the shadow excavation uh, foundation excavation now let's look at the relationship who can tell me look at it very well where it, where can you find a point at which the relationship is starting from it is starting from which side of the foundation excavation Yes, it is starting from the finishing star, uh, side of the foundation excavation and it is entering into which side? The starting side of the soil sampling. So the relationship becomes finish to start. 
although we are going to we are supposed to finish the excavation as uh, the foundation excavation before the soil sampling but due to one or two reasons or due to some reasons uh, with regards to the foundation excavation we are starting our soil sampling one week prior to the shadow foundation excavation date so in this case the soil sampling activity is leading the foundation excavation one week so we are starting the soil sampling one week time before we start our foundation excavation so our successor which is the soil sampling activity is advanced is advanced with regards to our predecessor activity which is the foundation excavation so uh, now our successor activity which is the soil sampling has come to lead our foundation excavation or our predecessor activity which is the foundation excavation although the foundation excavation uh, should have started or should have finished first before we do our soil sampling but due to some delays with regards to the predecessor activity we are starting our soil sampling one week prior to the shadow date for the foundation excavation so i believe you you understand the the concept of the lead in project scheduling so when we talk of a lead in a project scheduling i believe by now you've gotten the concept behind or the meaning of a lead in scheduling so when we move on to the practical session and you hear of a term lead i don't think you are going to be confused because you understand the meaning of a lead let's move on let's come to the other one which is the lag a lag when we talk of a lag a lag is the time period so that will be the opc side the time period a successor can be delayed a successor can be delayed with regards to the predecessor activity a time period a successor can be delayed with regards to the predecessor activity so let's look at this example in a project to build an ultra modern school complex the team may begin the foundation excavation six days after they begin geotechnical site investigation six days after they begin geotechnical site investigation now let's digest it in a project to build an ultra modern school complex the team they may do what begin the foundation excavation so in this case our successor activity our successor activity our successor activity uh, which is the which is the the foundation excavation has started it has started but then our site investigation has been delayed six days six days six days six days our site our geotechnical site investigation has been delayed for six days we've started our foundation excavation which is our successor activity our predecessor activity which is the site investigation has been delayed six days it has been delayed six days so when you look at the two you can see that our successor lag six days is in a lag of six days prior to our site investigation our successor activity which is the foundation excavation 
it says this lag with regards to the geotechnical site investigation because these two activity look at the relationship starts to what start it means that they were supposed to be on in line they were supposed to they were supposed to start together they were supposed to be in a position of starting at the same day but because of one or two reasons because of one or two reasons we are we are delaying we are delaying we are delaying with regards to this predecessor we are delaying so our foundation excavation is going to start prior to our site investigation six good days as we move on also as you go to the practical section you'll be able to understand all these technical terms in the shedding process so now let's look at a typical pdm of a project shadow this is our starting date or our starting date of the project and this is our finishing date so when you take this uh relationship look at it it start it it, it is starting here which is the finishing side of the whole activity which is the starting activity so it is start it is finishing here and then starting here when, when you look at the a and d here we can finish to start finish to start let's look at the start and b this will become finish to start b and e finish to start e and the end of the project becomes finish to start let's come to the d and e now the d and e has finish to finish relationship why because when we look at the activity the whole activity of d this is where the arrow is pointing because always we move in this direction we move towards our our right hand side so if the arrow is telling us that we got into this side means that we have ended or we have finished the activity and this is also ending here so it has a finish to finish relationship it has a finish to finish relationship i think uh, with a practical section of the of, of the whole of the whole uh scheduling in the ms project and in the primavera you are, you understand the meaning of all these technical themes thank you for watching and as 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 i, as I keep saying uh, keep subscribing share to your friends let them also uh, have a feel of these lessons and then let them also subscribe so that we can all learn together uh, this session is it means being brought to you by uh, RMC Consort Ghana, RMC Consort Ghana, and uh, we thank you uh, for for your for your for your time and energy uh, in this uh, master class. We will bring you more updates, especially on, on Mondays on Mondays. So keep tuned to your your YouTube channel of project uh, masterclass and we will update you always on monday thank you very much